Nice. I'll just do a quick YouTube intro. YouTube is still doing it. That's for great. This one just because uh, for the people that are logging to three, okay, they're going to need. You've got, 20, early, you got yeah. 20 minutes. But we're having fun. You're having such fun. Nice. All right. Facebook looking good. YouTube. All right, my friends, uh, I am Brad Beard. This is Grady Beard. Hello. This is the beginning of Table 3. Uh, if you haven't been with us for uh, the episodes of Table 1 and 2, we uh, got a little ahead of ourselves, so we're uh, basically killing some time. Well, we'll have a great time. Checking things out. Getting ready for Table So table for three. those of you that are uh, just logging in for me to watch Table 3, we've got about 25 minutes or so before we actually start judging uh, table three. I think that's enough time for us to get everything ready to go. And we have lots and, of fun stuff to talk um, about. We've got a lot of fun things to talk about. So uh, absolutely, uh, so if you uh, don't want to see us chat and kibitz, then uh, go ahead and uh, fast forward 25 minutes. Nothing's happening on YouTube there, Greg. Well, uh, I, I see that it's moving though. Martin, are you, see, are you seeing us on YouTube there, homie? It's not happening. I can tell you right now. I know it happens when things happen, and Something's not right. yeah, it is not right. Good thing we're right. working Something's out not right. the details. All right. We're gonna work out those details. And uh, is, fa Facebook. is Facebook? Is <laughs> Facebook? Can we can we validate that Facebook is actually working, please? Yeah, you your oh my lord! These uh, technical difficulties are difficult to deal with. Uh, is Facebook working? Uh, YouTube isn't again. Uh, there goes YouTube. YouTube's back. All right, yay, YouTube. All right, I'll go ahead and start again. Here we go. Uh, we are a bit early. Uh, we had some technical difficulties earlier, and then we jumped ahead and lost our minds. So uh, right now, we're going to be killing about uh, 20 minutes or so. Um, I'm going to be uh, palate cleansing with some of my uh, sparkling. As you can see, the cage is off of my uh, sparkling wine. That's very dangerous. Anytime you have a cage off, somebody could lose an eye or you could break out the front windshield of your car or many other things. So you've got to be very careful with that. Um, but uh, uh, so if you just want to get straight to table three, what did Brad have to say about my wine? Um, you would uh, fast forward, I'm saying about 25 minutes uh, here. So we'll uh, do that. We're not going to break this uh, video up. Uh, so you'll just have to put up with us getting the new wines out here and getting the glassware and all that kind of stuff, and then we'll get things ready. To go. But we'll have all the wine ready to go um, right at about uh, 50 minutes after the hour, and then we'll bring those things in and we'll be, we'll be good. But in the meantime, um, Grady and I are gonna be chatting and, uh, and uh, you know, talking about some things. I'd love just to have this as a little recap of the, um, of the event so far. So uh, for those of you that don't know and just uh, randomly found me because uh, you were on some YouTube uh, rabbit hole or Facebook face hole, uh, this is uh, me judging my wines that I have given to my fancy wine club members and they've created these beautiful things and we're calling it the 2020 crush Crushing, Crushing, the crushing. Uh, competition tour. And uh, so <laughs> what Grady and I are going to do is enjoy a little uh, sparkler. And the reason why we're yes, doing we that is uh, right now I'm taking this as an opportunity to cleanse my palate. I've tasted um, eight wines so far yeah. this morning. So eight I need to wines. bring uh, mm -hmm. some nice acid that's going to be like scrubbing bubbles going sure. across my palate. I'm eating more carbs today than I uh, typically would. Um, but it's because having those nice carbs as a base in my stomach. Uh, that's going to allow me to uh, keep a clear head about the things. So and cheers, taste Greg. more yeah, wine. Absolutely. This is so exciting. Yeah, it is important to cleanse your palate. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, what right. a great way to do it. Oh, my God. There's no better way than that. Holy cow. Oh, man. Best, that, was, that was so, so best good. Best Tuesday ever. But, you know, um, I've been reflecting about this uh, week so far. And um, 
Thank you, everybody, for all of the absolutely wonderful comments as you were sending your blends in um, about how much you enjoyed um, the first uh, days of blending. Um, as much enjoyment as you got out of it, we did as well. Gosh dang it, we just have so much fun. It was so much fun. And um, as things change, we do things differently. Uh, what's really neat is that... Ow, that was my foot. I know, but they can't see the, that thing. Oh, but, there you go. Uh, yeah, so uh, as, as things go along, uh, you know, if you uh, come and visit me and we're doing this blending party, typically you'd be uh, saying hello to me. I'll be pouring you champagne. We'll talk, uh, have fun, catch up. But then within a couple of minutes, uh, we've got to get things going and uh, we don't get a lot of interaction. What I liked about this deal is that I yeah. got to uh, sit and talk to you guys. Grady typically is uh, down making the blends all afternoon. He never has a chance never have uh, to talk to anybody. So anyway, we really, really um, enjoyed um, the not quite so high pressure yeah. of this it blending party. It took a lot of the so pressure off of us. We'll be definitely um, uh, incorporating some of these fantastic things. We learn a lot every year. 11 mm -hmm, years mm -hmm. you've been doing this. 11 amazing blending parties. And this is super fun. This has been a great year. That seems like a lot of years. Gosh, it does. But it just flew by. Literally just flew by. It did. Um, it really did. But uh, I just wanted to say uh, thank you again to all of you guys for your fantastic support. Always amazing. Uh, but we just had so much fun. We had fun. It was, it was great. just fun. The whole and day. here's the best part. We're continuing the fun because the we, judging is fun because so many weird things are happening. Yes, we get to <laughs> and um, you know, I, I'm just enjoying tasting all the fantastic wines. The, the blends first are great. The first eight blends, all of them mm -hmm. amazing. All of them uh, were definitely winners in their own right. Um, and uh, just really, really, really happy. Yeah, I'm super happy with this is all coming together. And I'm really happy that we've got all day to play with this and then all day tomorrow to finish up with the other blends with mm. the right bank. We're doing left bank today. Mm -hmm. So and tables right one, two, tomorrow. three, four, five, six today. Yep. Uh, tomorrow we will uh, knock out uh, the rest through 12. Seven through 12. Seven through 12. And um, again, just a little overview. I'm uh, judging the wines based on what the wines taste against your partner's blends. Uh, so it's not what I sort of want this whole competition to end up creating. Maybe I want a, a nice, elegant, uh, subtle style wine. Nope, I'm, I'm judging these wines based on their character at mm -hmm. that moment and that time. So um, it actually makes it kind of fun. It does, uh, because there again, Brad has a lot of wine knowledge, but he has no preconceived notions. He's mm -hmm. tasting each wine for what it is and how it is against the four wines he's tasting. He's not looking for anything specific. He's just looking for the most exciting wine of the four. I have preconceived notions just like everybody else does. <laughs> I'm trying to put those out of my mind and, and judge the wine for exactly uh, how I feel at that exact moment. Yep. And um, I've got lots of snacks in between so that I can have a nice fresh palate going into all these things. And instead of doing uh, a wine every half an hour, we're doing it every hour. Uh, so that gives me time to uh, reset. Wow, that looks pretty cool. Uh, Here like comes that. all the new wines yeah, for the next table three. Brad, have a question? Yes, we have a question. John asked, so when you blend, Brad, are you biased by supply that you have or does it not matter because you're able to use what's left over for the smaller jug blend? Uh, that's a great idea. Uh, so the question was, yeah. am I biased by how much wine I have to actually create these blends with? So I have set aside a barrel or two of each one of these wines that I've given you. Uh, but uh, am I biased? All right, I'll come back to that. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to that uh, bias part in a second. Uh, the only problem with being biased is I'd have to know what each blend had in it, and I don't know what each blend has. We're judging all these blind. So um, our, our uh, amazing Mercury Wine crew, so we've got Martin, Sherry, Danny, Stephen, Jamie, Grady, uh, put all these blends together yesterday. And uh, all of these blends, each bottle has a special code to it. Uh, so I don't know what is the dominant wine. Right. With all honesty, I do know one of the wines was very dark. And some of the wines were a little lighter. So if I'm seeing a very dark wine, I do know that is dominant in the darkest wine that I gave you. But that's the only bias that I've got 
uh, coming in as far as, you know, being able to see immediately uh, mm -hmm. to a wine. I also am very keen on mm -hmm. um, the two lighter wines and what they're bringing to the table. So um, as, I'm, as I'm tasting the wine and I'm looking at the wine, I'm, I, may, I am making a judgment of sort of knowing what is the, is the dominant blend. But uh, oh. I, oh, wait a minute. I was going to go for 20 more minutes. Thank he God was, we have yet. a follow-up question. End of, the day is, end of the day is you are dealing with wines that range in price from uh, is a retail, if they were going into my wines, anything into the, um, you know, 85 uh, you know, everything from the $45 price point up to the $85 price point. So you're correct. Um, I have done the math. I've already spent about uh, $18,000 on um, the wines that I have uh, given you guys and the wines that I'm uh, now tasting here today uh, based on um, losing a half a barrel of each one of my wines. Uh, so that money is, uh, I think, being well spent. Well spent. Martin, question well number spent. two. Oh, no Oh, when I'm making the father, um, no, it's, uh, okay. If I have two and a half barrels of Cabernet Franc and I'm making the father, which is a Cabernet Franc based blend, um, this is where, uh, absolutely not on my bias on, I'm going to make this so that I can use every single bit of what's left of the father. I will make a blend um, with percentages that, uh, make me the happiest. And then we will see what our, uh, what the wines we have available are. And so what I'll typically do is if I have two and a half or, or three barrels of the father, we'll start with a base blend of two. So I know that I'll at least have that much, uh, to make it and then we'll go. And, uh, but what's neat because I do have the jug, how neat is it if I have 15 gallons left of the father, which or, or the, the Cabernet Franc, and then that uh, Cabernet Franc either goes into topping my other wines mm -hmm. or that Cabernet Franc can go into um, other blends that I'm making. Don't forget, uh, we have the Rocket. So the Rocket has some Cabernet Franc in it too. So if, if I've got, let's say I, I do want to put a little bit of uh, Cabernet Franc into the Rocket, so then one barrel gets peeled off. So at least I know that. But let's say um, I get done with the father and I know I've got an extra 50 gallons, uh, I can um, increase that blend to, to make the better blend. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really not um, a financial consideration. It's only about what the flavor is and being true to um, the blend that I'm making. You know, uh, the Cabernet Franc, it better taste like the Cabernet Franc. It better taste like the father. Uh, it won't taste identical, but it should have all the, those things in there. So that's a, that's really a good question. Any other, Thank you, John. That any other, um, uh, dark, dirt, dirty, nitty gritty, uh, questions like that? Not at the moment, but I'm sure they're coming. All right. Coming. They're awesome. coming though. They're coming. Do you have any questions, Grady? Oh boy. Um, golly, I've got so many questions. It's just hard. They're hard to pick which question to ask at this point. Um, <laughs> Oh, some people are them. asking about what the varietals are, and we're not going to tell you. Everybody but Brad, which I find hilarious. Lots of uh, questions about the varietals. Uh, I would love to uh, tell you what they are now. Uh, I think it's a little more exciting to wait. It is, um, because it will make it more exciting. And then when you think about your blends and what you put in and the wine, and maybe you'll be surprised at which wine became your base blender. Um, maybe you weren't expecting that wine to be rind. the one that you love. So it's kind of exciting. That rind is really hard on this one. I'm telling you what, but that Mimule, oh mm. my God, that cheese is so good. I think it's an ET on the end of that. Mimulet? Yeah. Mimulet, think... not Mimule. Oh. Ah. It's French. It is rich and dark, and it <laughs> Freddy, is delicious. Freddie must be sleeping right now. Freddie's He's like, totally yeah, because obviously oh. Freddie would have been on that like a crazy dog. Oh. We'll save that for him later. He'll get some of that a little He'll later. Get a little All right, bit I'll go for later. a softer cheese that doesn't explode mm -hmm. off a knife like that. Oh, my God. Hilarious. Delightful. But, no, we started off so strong with our first two. We just we just raced through them because we were so good. And now we're going to... Or we uh, didn't print out the timeline and uh, yeah, somebody, somebody got a little excited. That and, was my fault. That was totally my and fault. And we um, 
went uh, a little uh, crazy but on that. But you know, so. uh, Trisha was saying, uh, the faster we went, the less time she'd have to cut away from her boss, and uh, <laughs> she wouldn't get into bad trouble. And I don't want her to get into trouble. I want her to still have a job after this, but she had to see the blending. She had to see the fun blending. So that just tells you the dedication that our crew has to the subtle nuances of the judge and the blends. Or because it's a boring date work and this is a little more fun than... I thought the tuning in was so they can find out if their blend won. Well, they do want to find out, but they won't know because there's code names. You won't know until Saturday what your code was, where you ended up, and if you're at the uh, in the finals or not. So it's kind of exciting. It keeps the excitement going. Anticipation, I think, is the word. Say it. Say it. Patience. <laughs> but maybe the rain. She says, oh, she doesn't get trouble. Isn't really to blame. So I'll remove the cause. <laughs> but not the symptom. Dun, dun, well, dun, dun, dun. All right, so now that we've gotten your now that show we've out of done, the way. Now that we've done a 94 <laughs> show, a Rocky Horror Picture Show. Good time. We are coming up on um, getting back to the seriousness. Yes, back to table three. Uh, in the business, this is called the filler. Obviously, it's not nearly as exciting as looking at us blend. This is super exciting. I'm loving this. Um, I have champagne. What's not to be loved about <sighs> delicious champagne? Especially right. the 10-year sparkling. You know... <sighs> Freddy! Bad dog! Was that an earthquake or somebody's <laughs> enormous ass? Uh, we'll never know. It could be either one. We are in it California. Might have been. Fred, we, we dropped something for you, little dog. We did. There's that. I Fred. think they were getting the right blends for me. Uh, they uh, brought blends out. Yes, Those didn't look like the right ones. I could sniff out a wrong blend uh, from there. But anyway, uh, so, uh, oh, pit crew. Pit crew, if you could get um, table three ready for me, that would be fantastic. Hey, for you. Yes, yes. Oh, the code names is part of the fun for me. I love making up code names. Well, hello there. Back when I had my Pink Panther oh, decoder I have to ring. Come down here and say hi to everybody. Hello, Danny. All right. I have Table Three's wines. Nice. Well, that must be me. We're getting very close. That's what you wanted, right? Thank you, Pit Crew. Okay, and then I'll give you. I remember. Is it? Doing wait a minute. Time warp. Wait a minute, Martin. Is it a jump to the left? <laughs> and then, and then, a, and then a, a step to the right? Mm -hmm. Martin, could you put your hands on your hips? <laughs> and your hips would you please bring your knees in tight? Oh, yes. But what's and the if, most exciting part? If you could do the pelvic, pelvic thrust. thrust. Yeah. That's because what, what, what would it do to me? If I drive you insane. Say, hey, hey, hey. All right. <laughs> Let's do the time warp again. So just quickly for code names, I take the alphabet. And then I take another alphabet, and then I take another alphabet, and I just start pulling the, the pieces Greek together. The Greek alphabet? <laughs> yes, a little Greek, uh, a little Phoenician, and then it all comes together. Um, but I try not to make too many codes that, that mean too much. I don't want to uh, you know, put two words, two letters together that may um, influence Brad's thought process on the wine. Also, we have a guest judge that just showed what? up. What? Unbelievable. Um, maybe a previous winner. Uh, so this person knows what they're talking about, and there you go. All right. For those of you that couldn't hear, uh, Danny was saying that we just had a uh, new uh, all-star guest judge, possibly a previous winner just showed up. That's very exciting. So we'll be doing uh, that. Uh, my uh, time clock's about to run out of gas. If we could get a, um, a little cord Power for cord that, that, that'd be good. Dog. Excellent. Um, so... That's a great question. How do we come up with it? We used to actually have uh, code names that um, were words. were either Grady or Brad, and so we were pitting each other against us, and it's, it's so hard to vote against either one of us. That God, was obviously sun, a moon. bad idea. So we just ended up going with uh, a letter uh, designator, and um, that seems to work the best, so nobody then has a preconceived notion on, on, sure. the, on the judging pattern. We thought it was fun to have names as the code, but... It turned out that people got um, emotional. They did about they. How could you vote against God? They were how could crying. you vote against the sun? Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of hail marys and some bead counting mm. uh, as they were uh, <laughs> as, as they were uh, voting against uh, something that they shouldn't yeah. be voting against. But uh, 
so that's a great question. That's how that happens. And um, as it is, I, I know uh, I've got a general idea on who is at what table and stuff like that. Sure. And, and that's nice. But as far as the wines are, they are um, actually for those of you that are tuning in. So we have little labels on this. So this one says this one has a three. That is a uh, code for table, table three. three. And then there's a little code below it. And then I've got my judging cards and each one of them are going to have a code. And as we've got a few minutes left, I would like to go ahead and get set up. So let's do it. Um, which which one's this, Greg? That one is AC in AC? the first position. All right, first and then position need, is and AC. How about an LY? LY, sounds good. All right, BC. British Columbia, what? And then your designated driver, DD. See, you can still get preconceived notions DD, about these wines. Uh, what's that one? LY. <laughs> there it is. Nice. And then I'm going to turn these back around because every time I'm judging a wine, I'm going to double. Make sure he I just want to double check. In the groove. And so we have a uh, British Columbia. That's this one, sir. Word up. Nice place. Tax is too high, though. Seriously. Seriously, tax is too high, though. We'll save this for. Save uh, this for. You know, Mr. Uh, we, have, we, have a, we have a guest judge. I don't know how it, um, what kind of things are going on. So we'll do Nico All right, so on we'll, this next we'll one. We'll drop we'll, him we'll, in. We'll, we'll that. Or you got some time? Or you want to, actually, maybe you should see how things go. Right. So maybe we'll, we'll, have Mark, we'll have Martin come in on the next one. Yep, yep. And then uh, we'll Nico, drop you on the next we'll, we'll drop you in on the next one if that's okay. Yep. I think it'll be fun. And maybe we'll, like bits with maybe you. we'll have some, now that we've got all these uh, fancy uh, guest judges that have arrived, maybe we can, uh, maybe we'll do some tiebreaker action or something like oh, that. Oh, great, great. One more table to do. Excuse me? One more table? After Ten three. Sorry. After three. Uh, <laughs> no, we have six. We have six total tables that we're doing today. And this is three. We got So we are more. on three, so I would say that math would add up to 17 more tables today. Is that what it is? Or Something was like it that. A, no. We're going to drink all the tables, then we're going to come back tomorrow and drink them all again. All right. Um, are we going to need to shut things down and restart things, or are we going to be so. okay with I this I think one? we should roll, because I already I labeled then, this one as three. And then what I want you to do is say, uh, if you don't want to listen to 45 minutes of ridiculousness... I'll type that in, yeah. Uh, go to... This minute, and then um, whatever, you know, whatever minute, minute yeah. that happens to be uh, when I'm actually starting. 22.46, yeah. and then we'll start ju judging your mm -hmm. wines. Yes, I'll do that for all yes. the nice people uh, who are going to be tuning in tonight after work who are not as cool as Trisha, yes. and then, who can uh, hang out. And, and then all those people that are, uh, you know, and are worried about that. I'll be, what I'll, I'll also be judging is what you thought each one of these wines were. Right. So all of you that have uh, emailed us in and told us what you thought these wines mm -hmm. were, we will give a good judging to you as Get well. Ready for a ribbon. <laughs> ribbon there's there's ribbon? one wine specifically. <laughs> and here's the deal. I'm going to go. If you're tuned in at oh um, 46 minutes after the hour, Hold on to your hats, uh, kids. there's one wine that has uh, completely discombobulated my people. And um, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know it's not your fault. Um, <laughs> I am giving you a wine, one of these wines you have not seen from me as a uh, standalone uh, varietal mm -hmm. uh, since 2009. My lord. And so it's not your fault that you are... Um, it's been led down the primrose path, Confusing, so and it's also has something to do with its age. So oh. this wine is also uh, pretty young, and it also comes from a specific vineyard. Nice. And um, it is, uh, it's understandable that you were thinking this might be something else because mm -hmm. um, this is for the first time ever I have uh, given you two wines that there's uh, you've never uh, had before because they are super special and then very How low fun. supply. How fun is mm -hmm. that? I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. This one of them is a big part of the, and then the other one is a huge part of the. Mm. I know. Mm. Mm. Dang. My brain just wants to scream it out, but I know I would die. So I'm not saying anything. <sighs> shall I move on? <laughs> shall, I, shall I leave you to your own devices now? I don't now? know if it's death. <laughs> oh, it would be death. You see that hill? It's as steep as it looks. Mm -hmm. All the way down in the ravine, and uh, badgers and raccoons would be eating my remains. But wait, Grady. Bumbles bounce. I do. I do. I've been drinking so much during COVID, I totally bounce. 
I would no, bounce the bumble, all the way down the ravine. No, the bumble wasn't heavy set. I just was calling you a bumble. It was just a bouncy bumble. I was going for the, you were just large and scary. Ah, well, that but you are bounce. correct about. But the bumbles bounce. Totally bounce. I, I saw that. And then you're really excellent at putting the star on at the end of the day. I am. That's what I do. Ding. But you are motivated by the sound of a pig. <laughs> I, but you know, I am a porkitarian. And so, so I am motivated by bacon. So when the crawling around out in front doing his oinking sounds, you're like, oh, bacon, Ooh, bacon, 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 bacon. All right. You know All what? Right. Should, we, should we move I, on? I would love, to start, start I would love to start getting serious. You want to do your introduction while I uh, I would like bring... you to get set. I will. I'll compose myself. Great. And then you'll do your introduction, and, and, and then I'll send over the, the guest and judge. Then, uh, staff, take this champagne away. No. I'll take the champagne away. <laughs> Give me the champagne. I got it. I'm on it. My palate has been cleansed. My brain waves are strong. <laughs> I am uh, preparing to get this show on the road. All right. I'm going to give everybody just a second, maybe just a little salumi. So we're doing table three now. Is this table three? This is table three. So then he'll go after that. Or we could throw our ringer in. We had some table situations because we do have a uh, previous winner here as one of our guest judges is what we're discussing. We want to make sure that he's not judging his own table. We don't want that to happen. So we're going to be moving those things around. And wait a minute. Hearing something in my ear? All right, the staff's getting ready. Things are, things are getting going. Uh, they're saying that we do probably should wait five more minutes. I'm going to have to talk for five more minutes before we get started. Is that worth thinking? No, I should go ahead and get ready. I'm getting some finger pointing. Uh, uh, actually, there was a lot of finger pointing. <laughs> actually, I think I just startled the entire staff. <laughs> because they are ready to go, which means I'm ready to go. So, Grady, on uh, 12.51 and uh, 15 seconds, if you would mark this video that we're doing mark. as uh, the, the technical start of table three. Yes. Can we get a uh, three, two, one from the crowd or anything like that? Ready, three, two, one. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to Brad Beard's Taste Race and the first judging round of the 2020 Crushing the Competition Tour. On our previous episode, I have asked you to create a wine blend that has, that has anything we need to learn? Color. Oh, that, that, oh no, no, let's start with color. Uh, a unique wine blend that has color, uniqueness, nuance, and taste. And this is your chance to impress me and my squirrel friends to move on to the next round. Otherwise, I will ask you and your wine to oxidize away. With all that being said, let's introduce the folks that are going to be um, up for elimination. And this is uh, table three of the uh, left bank region one. So we have uh, Derek and Ebby. <laughs> <laughs> So we have <laughs> Debbie and Eric. My lips work that way. We have Debbie and Eric with Team Cheers. And actually what happened, I was like, really, Team Cheers? All right, Team Cheers, yay! Very nice, very nice, very nice. We have, uh, all I've got on my thing is uh, we have that, what is this one? We have uh, Lucas as the, uh, the, the Portolans. Is that what that's? The, the Portalians? The Port... Oh, I get that now. The Portalians. That, that's very clever. Very nice. Very nice. Um, and then we have uh, Nichols. Uh, we have a uh, Full-Up Brewing. Flurp. Flurp. I believe that's a simple. That is a flurp. <laughs> I thought they were phonetically spelling it for me. That is the flurp. Uh, brewing, and then we have uh, Nico and Andra. Uh, is uh, is this the real life? 
And the answer to that question is yes, it always is. Um, all right, so we've got a lot of things that are going to be happening uh, in the next few minutes, and I'm going to be going through all these wines. I'm going to be tasting them. I'm going to be judging them. I'm going to have a uh, friend come up here and uh, judge the wines with me. What is really important to know right now, uh, besides uh, my reading ability or my ability to spell or uh, say things, is, is that I do not know what wines I'm tasting. I do know that it is a these wines are from table three, but that is the only thing I know because right here I've got a little sticker that says table three. And then right below that little sticker, I have a uh, two letter uh, code. And so the first one that is AC. And so all I'll know is that that is a uh, blend from table three that is AC. I will not know what the blends actually are, um, but of course, um, if it's a darker blend, I can assume it's going to have uh, one wine more than in the other. If it's a little lighter, uh, then I'll know that it's probably got those in the base, but I will judge these wines based on this table. I am not judging them based on the previous two tables and what those wines were. These wines are the best wines out of these four. I'm also not going to judge these wines based on if I feel they're going to, if they're age worthy either. I'm just judging them are, is this the most complex? Is this the most, uh, uh, does this uh, wine have the most unique uh, nerve and talent uh, that I can possibly uh, squeeze out of these things. So that's how I will be judging these wines today. So I'm going to flip that back around and I'm going to invite um, a, a very good friend and colleague and somebody who you may have seen but never gotten to talk to because they were in the background blending uh, for the last 10 years. But out of the background and into the light no more, we have Martin Niner. Thank you very much for joining me. Hey, today. everybody. Thanks for having me, man. This has been so much fun. I mean, I've loved other blending parties. I've been to every one except for the first one. I didn't get to go to the first one. No. But uh, this has been awesome. It's been a lot of fun. He's been able to see, uh, you know, he was super behind the scenes, but he was uh, so focused on making a thousand blends within three hours and doing it appropriately that he wasn't able to be uh, uh, checking out and seeing uh, what was happening uh, throughout. So, yes, it's very fun to be on this it side. Is. I get to I'm talk to, I've been able to talk to so many more people and uh, interact more, especially in the, in the video chats with the Zoom call. Yep. That was fun. And now we get to taste some crazy blends. I, I've never, I've, well, I taste most of the blends, but I never get to judge them. <laughs> this is important yeah. this is a very good thing all right so uh with that being said we're still four minutes away from our actual start time i wonder if i should find anything else to time to kill what else could we talk about hmm. maybe a cheese how's your, yeah how's i think i need a little uh are you feeling pretty good i need a little something let me uh let me do this let me let me let me uh pick this off give it a quick stab actually here how about if i make you a uh oh, that would be um a uh, touchless plate here of some little snacks, just so that you know that you're ready to go. Maybe a little salumi. Come on, baby. Get in there. There we go. Maybe one of these nice crackers. Don't eat the edges. No, I, I brought some okay. crackers to help cleanse my palate. Yep. But I, I'm, this is going to be much better. There Thank we go. Thank you. Sir. All right, so we've got those ready to go. I've had my champagne. I've had my snacks. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get things started here. Uh, I'm going to start with the AC. That is my number one. All right. So as we're going along, uh, Martin, what I want out of you is you want to think about the color, the clarity, the nose, the beginning, the middle, the finish. These things are all very important. But I also, as you're tasting them, give me an overall impression because we can have some wines that are doing this. Mm -hmm. Not the best thing in the world, but if they're doing this or they're doing this beautiful, getting ready to climax and there's a little let down and then it comes back again and it's fantastic. Uh, so we can forgive that little that little flaw maybe. And usually when at least the, the last few blends, there's been the, the flaws have been so minute. Um, so that's what I want out of you is right. to um, is to be my uh, wingman and uh, tell me about some stuff. Oh, wow. Uh, it's got a nice mid color. Some of the wines were a little bit lighter. Some were a little heavier. Uh, this wine this tells really me that we've got wine. a little heavy. We've got a little light, um, but a nice. Um, that'd be a nice Cabernet color 
which is just a classic, um, classic ruby. See, I see, I see this a little bit lighter than Cabernet. It's your opinion. definitely the nose. That's, I, <laughs> oh no, that was just the color. Not not, not the, the color. It was just I wasn't describing it as a cat. Oh oh, that oh, was oh. just the the, the color I appearance. You. If I had uh, this in my glass, um, I would say, oh, this this is uh, possibly a cabernet. If I was doing a blind my judging like that, that, no, that's okay. The nose on this one is really nice. I get it's it's activating something that reminds me of juicy fruit gum it's got this like real sweet thing and i don't know what they do with juicy fruit gum but it's really good so if i was thinking about juicy fruit gum i would think about um uh, uh you're, you're getting more of a chemically fake flavor no i are you no, are you not. looking for uh juicy fruit remember is that the one with stripes with the little giraffe that was selling it? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, oh, was that was nasty. That one was nasty. Oh, I think juicy fruits like pomegranate. I think that's a that's more of a pomegranate. I'm, with, I'm, all, I'm all on board. I was just uh, I forgot about the fruit stripes. <laughs> the fruit stripes. Those things were nasty. Okay. Yes, I it's agree. Like the ding all dongs right. of. All right, this one's. Oh, ding dongs. <laughs> that is such a fantastic chemically corporate um, <laughs> chocolatey flavor that I'll never forget. I know. Um, Especially when you put a whole one in your mouth and you have to chew it. Hmm. We, you've hmm. all done it. You've all done it. Don't give me that crap. What is this guy you're tasting with, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> I, um... Fantastic nose. Uh, this nose. It's rich. It's elegant. I mean, it, it's, it's got some fantastic things going on there. Uh, wonderful. Um, mm, cherries, but layers of cherries. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. That, that, Very sweet. That's a Very happening. Very sweet nose. I, I'm not getting sweet, but this no. is why we have this is why we have mm -hmm. other folks uh, going. I'm not getting it as sweet. I'm, I'm getting it as just a solid cherry. Um, I'm not getting any of the candied side of it, but that's this is why we have other people. Um, definitely not candied. Mm -hmm. No, definitely not candied. I, I understand where you're going, though. Mm. Wow. That. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, wow. That's got a really nice mouthfeel. Very I'm gonna give this. A, I'm gonna give this an MF. MF. In a in a thumbs up. Okay. Yeah, I definitely give this a thumbs up. This it, is it, really it good. It does have a nice uh, when you notice a mouth feel and it's not on your judging uh, thing. That's that's a good thing to have. And the finish uh, is still lingering from that. That wine has got uh, many layers, mm -hmm. many layers of comp. What I'm finding with this wine is that um, I'm not I'm not getting a high or a low. I haven't found any cliffs to where you know uh, there was one of the wines that has beautiful aromatics and then it kind of dropped down, but then it hit you know then it like took off again. It was <clears> fantastic. <throat> I like this. I'm getting. complexity, richness, all the way through the nose. That's absolutely translating to the palate. Mm. Cherries, plums. A little a little anise is running around in there. That's a positive, not a negative. Uh, that's also possibly in the spicy characteristics. Uh, solid, it's solid all the way through. I, I'm finish, looking at all these things. The finish is actually lingering... Uh, and it's actually building. Um, so as, as it's coming off, we have a really strong aromatics, good flavors up and down. I hit the beginning. It, you know, it leads right from the nose, and it, and it kind of uh, is getting to a crescendo at the finish. But we're not getting a drop for the, for the lingering. It's just kind of giving you a nice uh, fading off into the sunset. Uh, It is, um, it is a strong start for table three. 
Now, because of the complexity, would you say that it's more than likely all four varietals, or that just doesn't matter? Wasn't looking for it. Okay. Uh, if you had two varietals or four varietals, it does not matter to me. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't out. Okay. This person put 10% of uh, yellow and, oh, that's a 10% yellow. And this is a 45% uh, X. Okay. Um, that was not a consideration. Going back to uh, John, who was asking me, you know, uh, if you've got more of this one, would you rather have it be this blend or the other? Um, that one's, that's not in my... Let's think That's about good. right now. Yeah, I, um, I couldn't tell anyway. I my first guess, I got zero out of four. So was it zero? I got zero. Uh, but we got three out of four of the second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> okay. All right. Now we have Ly. Is that the next one? Ly is our next one. Table three. Ly. Table three. Ly. Is it true there's two uh, winners at table three? Didn't, didn't Nico and Andra and Debbie and Eric, or Debbie, oh, it was Der Debbie and Was it Derek Rand. and Jew? Derek and <laughs> Derek, I know. Yeah. It's like your J-Lo uh, name where you, you know, two, two hot superstars, we had, we you had put a, them together. We had a half of a winner, It's, it's yes. either Ebby or Derek, and I think, but, I think Derek is sexier. I think with the total package that they were all winners. For. That's true, it's true. Yes, that's very true. We love you. Uh, similar color? Yes. On this yes. wine? Very similar. Hmm. Ooh, a little bit lighter nose, right? You are correct, sir. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind, kind of deciding if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I... I I, I don't think it's either or because I think it's just as complex. It's just lighter. Mm -hmm. And just because it's lighter does not mean that it's a bad thing. If it's uh, light and uninteresting, that is a thing. But um, light and interesting is still uh, a strong contender. I can't wait to look this up later. But I think this has a little bit less of something in the first one that gave it the aromatic. Because I'm still detecting a little bit. Oh, my God. You're just like Sherlock Holmes. You are, you are, you are going through the process. I've, I've learned everything You're I know from good. you. You're so. doing good. Hmm. Oh, it's still got a lovely nose. I mean, it's really good. It's getting, it's getting better. Here's the it? thing, you know. So this one was a little more aggressive or a little more full-bodied. And but as I'm digging into this nose, <clears throat> it's making me really super happy. Um, it's not as up there, but that's okay. That is okay. Jeez, that's a, that's a, put that on one of those Christmas trees in your car and you've got a winner. <laughs> that, that, that nose is a winner, baby. That's a great nose. I like it. I like it more than the other one. The other one was more intense, but this is, this is more complex. Okay. This has got more things that are. You're um, right. It has more things. There's, I can't even, there, there's the cherries The things you, you can't about. describe. Yeah. It's the and that's the subtleties and nuances. Uh, this one has more aromatics than the things you can't describe. Mm. Yeah, there's a spicy, not too spicy, cherry, not too cherry, strawberry, balanced, not too yeah, balance, balance. This balance is like reminding that. me of um, balance. <laughs> This does remind me of one of your wines. I just can't remember which one. Mm. That's uh, the nose is translating. Elegance, subtlety, nuance is rolling all the way through the beginning. I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus. I was focusing on the beginning. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on the middle a little bit. Wow. Yeah, I know. I gotta. Kind of dropped off, didn't it? Nah, <sighs> I'm actually enjoying the retro nasal right now. Okay. It, uh, we had this nice build. Right. But I didn't, I didn't get a cliff. <clears throat> but what happened is I got a, I got, I got this, this ride, mm -hmm. but it wasn't a scary drop off. It's like, oh no, I got over the hill. 
and I'm kind of gliding. I'm, I'm getting a gliding into the finish. It's okay if you don't. Oh, my second sip was way different than my first sip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very different. That's um, that's very nice. I like that. It's much lighter on the palate for me. Mm -hmm. The first one was um, very intense in the mm -hmm. beginning, mm -hmm. and then that finish was crazy. Mm -hmm. This one, you're right. It's just it's lighter. It's more subtle. Right, the nuance. This is the nuance that you were mm -hmm. talking about. Because the other one's like, oh, here you go. Yes. Oh, sorry. More oh projection. my lord. I'm not loud enough. Yeah, that's, that's never loud. happened. That's that's just, never happened. Just last night we were discussing this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, wow. All right. Table three. The force is strong with this one. All right, BC. Don't let us down. First two are doing pretty. I don't believe in spit buckets. I believe they're fantasy. Is this the real life? <laughs> <laughs> or is it just fantasy? Actually, I need, I need to, one of our people is I just the real life. I, I need to break the palate. I need to okay. have a little something because that that last that last one was it built as the every sip got stronger. It was odd. It, it, it no, it was uh, it was you know. You have things, you have residuals from the previous wine mm -hmm. in there. That's why I always take a sip and, you know, think about it. But then it's the second sip and the third sip are where we're actually tasting the wine on its own. Um, mm. It's so good. Mm. so good. Like you say, this is like splitting hairs. It is. Yeah. And, uh, oh, man. All right. Another, another, another fine. This is just slightly darker than the other ones. Slightly darker. BC? Yes. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. A middle of the middle nose. Uh, middle in between these two. I would say this nose isn't uh, quite as dark, but uh, not as uh, not as sophisticated, but is uh, leading me to want more. I'm kind of wanting some more of whatever these flavors mm -hmm. happen to mm -hmm. be. I'm with you there. It was really nice to take a, a palate break and then smell this because mm. it, it definitely changes. Wow. Your I still got a little bit more of the, the cheese. Here. We've got a <clears throat> we've got a new introduction. What do you mean? Uh, there's a wine that uh, people have not been using that's more dominant in this one. Um, I'm, and I'm what I mean is uh, when you go from that. Um, Look at how I've rated it so far. Right. We have here, 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 and we've got this. Mm -hmm. And then we're actually going to get something here. Okay. Um, and then we kind of come back down. We got some really nice um, mid palate uh, flavors that I've not gotten out of the previous wines. Really? This wine peaks in the middle, but it is a beautiful, elegant uh, finish. So we're we're peaking in the middle, and then we've got this really nice, this really nice, elongated finish. Mm -hmm. Similar but different to the first one, right? Yeah, um, I think uh, the the. It doesn't. Have I think this wine. <clears throat> There's something between the middle and the finish that's uh, really exciting, but it's on the downslope. It's not like it's peak. It's not taking the wine to another peak. It's something that you're getting that you'd missed that you hadn't gotten on the first couple of um, indicators. And what happens is that as these other flavor profiles have given us everything they've got, uh, this other little flavor profile kind of stands up and says, hello, I'm here too. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding that very interesting. So somewhere between the There's middle some, and the finish, yeah. I'm finding this flavor that pops up that I'm not getting in the nose. And I'm not getting it, um, and I'm not getting it um, in the flavor. It's probably structure 
It's probably something that's adding structure to this wine because I think the wine has nice structure. It's mm -hmm. probably structure. And then this flavor that was giving the wine structure through the nose in the beginning is now able to finally pop out just a little bit. Um, and giving me an interesting note uh, for the finish. Interesting good way, not interesting bad way. <clears throat> I guess I get, I'm uh, first wine that I'm digging some chocolate out in the nose. There's some nice chocolatey uh, aromatics there. That's kind of super oh, exciting to me. Yep. There's actually, that's what I, oh, there it was. Sorry. It did show up earlier. I just couldn't that's identify it, it. It's a chocolatey note in the nose that is now um, uh, giving itself a little um, screen time like Danny uh at the end where <laughs> just as those other notes are, are are waning the chocolatey it's a chocolatey note it is that's that's what it is surprising because you're right no I, now it's chocolatey it's got a super chocolatey nose holy cow it's how got is that a, possible if that's how is that possible um just a minute ago i was dipping them in ganache and <laughs> i was like i want some chocolate ash on it uh, how is it possible, Martin asks, um, and this is somebody coming from a scientific background, possibly this company called Pantheon. Uh, this is, uh, this is how chemical, this is, it's really cool. Um, it's about the, uh, it's, 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 it's the positive and negative ions, uh, and the structure of the proteins together. And then when those proteins come together and they form a molecule that's similar to chocolate, then I will get a chocolatey note. So what happens, mm -hmm. it's really crazy with some red wines, is that the molecules, as they form, form molecules that are similar to other things that we have. That's why I always say wine is like a chameleon. Uh, a wine can taste like a million different things, just like a chameleon can change its colors. Uh, and it all is because um, it's really loosey-goosey on how the long chain proteins combine. Mm -hmm. And so what we've done is we've put a wine together in a way with the right acid and tannins and structure and molecule forms that it forms a molecule that when it hits your palate, mm -hmm. it's similar. It is not a chocolate molecule, but reminds you of a chocolate. Your, when your tongue tastes it, it reminds you of a chocolate molecule. We've gone down a rabbit hole that's been way too deep. It's okay. But um, the word you're looking for is terpene, and you're right on track. Mm. This is wonderful. This is a chocolate-esque terpene that is just, wow. you're right, it's so different from any of the other blends, at least I've tried one. So I tried table twos, I tried a few table ones. This this is the first time okay. I've right. gotten this one too. It's mm -hmm. crazy. No, 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 no. This I is why, love that this about is why it's exciting. I love that about it. Oh, wait, wait, I gave these people completely different wines to blend within theirs. No, we didn't. No, uh, same, same same wines. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's crazy. That's... Uh, I'm liking the chocolate. Yeah, I, I, well, I like chocolate, period. But very nice. Okay. It added a nice, uh, yeah, it added an interesting nuance to it. Thank you so much. It's interesting. Like when I first tasted this, I was like, "Ooh, I don't know if I like this as a way." Now that I've had a few tastes and gone through it, now it's like it's just from s swirling it has really shaped and in improved the, the flavor and the profiles mm -hmm. and all that's amazing. Sorry, I was a little behind. It's okay. This is also why I make the wines. Um, I, I find a wine, I blend it, I taste it, put it away for a couple of days, and come back to it and let all, all these impressions uh, come along. Well, that's an interesting note. I mean, I, I guess I knew that that you put these wines away. How long does it take you? Like, is it two days? Is it one day? Is it ten days? That where you can really start noticing the difference, either the where the wines really starting to change is after you've made a blend. I, um, I, I'm confident in the blend once I make it. Mm -hmm. uh, I put it away just to make sure I didn't make a mistake uh, so I can revisit it again. Mm -hmm. And then um, in, they haven't come together, but a day or so, they're starting to come together. And sometimes when wines come together, some other, off, some other flavors you may not like may come out. So I'm just double checking to make sure that all the flavors that I enjoyed were there and that they're developing in the right direction. Right. Uh, but the real answer is a year from then. Okay. Is when I'll really know if... If what you've done is... Yes. Wow. All right, oh, so we're gonna get on the DD. Hmm.
colors again, very similar. A little more uplifting on the nose, a little brighter. Oh yeah. I'm starting to get some spice, but it's not a definitive spice. There's something spicy in the nose. I kind of like it. Very, very different from the first and the, the third one. These are all very, actually, they're very unique. All of them. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> There's uh, something going on here. I'm going to have to get my fingers out and put some, my finger There's on something it. Something happening here. It's all good things. What it is. And. Uh, I need that. Mm. I'm gonna cleanse for a second. Because there's something happening here that I'm not quite sure I, I get. I'm gonna do a cracker and then I'll mm. try again. Man, these blend, all four of them have just been. I'm gonna recommend that. Oh, yeah? Okay. Because we're. Mm. Oh, it's, that was a good recommendation. And, and the reason, reason for it, good as it comes along, but the. The reason for it is that um, this wine has a higher acid, and I'm thinking that um, a little bit of fat might bring out some more flavors uh, to this wine. Okay. Wow. That's why we bring, bring something to the nose. Well, Holy smokes. I know, but, the yes. no, but did, you, did you inhale that? I yeah. you didn't, but it changed the nose. It did. I didn't, haven't had a drink yet. I'm Super just... Super important yeah. to understand. That the food changes the nose. That's crazy. Yes. But what, isn't 80 some percent of taste actually smell? If you're in that category. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're a super palate, and then it actually is most of it is in the palate, but actually your nose is uh, uplifted some more. All right. Okay. Boy, so different. That's why I wanted to really, <clears throat> these wines are very different animals. Mm -hmm. And that's why I really wanted to reset my brain on how I'm going to perceive this wine. Um, because this wine has got a lot of super fantastic things in its, um, in its, all right. This has, the nose has the power intensity of AC but doesn't have the strength the of DC. Thank you. Because, <laughs> you know, direct current's really nice. <laughs> Should I start paying banjo now? <laughs> that is, um, all right. Ooh, yeah, this is, holy cow. I think this is about lot as much of, fun as you can have on a Tuesday. Lot, lot, lot of wonderful things going on in there. Um, gosh darn it. Mm. We're going to have to like publish mm. these recipes and send all them right. out. Because man, these are just, they're all good. They're all so different. Because I could see having fish with one. I could see having steak with the other. Like, how, do you think about that? Do you think about food pairings when you're when you're tasting. Trying not to. Trying not uh, to? Um, only once the wine is done and it's in a bottle and it's ready to go will I care about the food pairing with it. Okay. Um, it's uh, The wine has to be a fantastic wine on its own. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's where some people or some producers oh. get all hung up that your X wine is supposed to be just a food wine and this wine is supposed to be that. I want the wine to be absolutely fantastic on its own and then if it happens to be a great food wine, that's important. That's, too. that's a bonus. Yeah. Okay. No wonder I like just quesadilla. That's the <laughs> don't need no food. Elegance, subtlety, nuance. Yeah. This wine has got them all in abundance. I like it very much. Wow, that was good. This finish is my only thing. It is a. It's lighter on the finish. But the, it's not just light. It, there's just in, in heavier wine, lighter wine. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to say not as interesting on the finish. Oh, okay. I'm okay with a light finish. Right. That's totally fine. But what's what's the most complex? What's the yeah. most nuanced, right? Like, that's what we're trying to decide. Yeah. Pour that out real quick. Yes, sir. And I want you to go back here because, see, now we're going to uh, – this is where one of those situations where one wine could actually really do some affecting of another. And what I'm going to suspect is – uh, all I want you to do is, you know, don't give me any other impression on the wine, but I want to see what you think about the finish now. I think because I had a little bit of cheese, it is so much more complex and long-lasting than this one. But it didn't have as strong as a, uh, a beginning, as I remember. Didn't want the beginning, I only wanted the end. That's true. I wasn't tasting. That's okay. Try the end again one time. Yes, sir. Ooh. The wines are equal all the way through. They're very... Here's what... Uh, here's what... One of the fun things is, and everybody's like, I want enough wine so I can make these blends. Not a bad idea. I should give you wines to make these blends. I would love it if you had these two blends and we were tasting them side by side. Uh, because these wines, we have a, we have a more full-bodied wine. We have a lighter-bodied wine. They are both, in, both incredibly complex. They have noses. They have finishes. They've got middles. They've got all sorts of crazy things. And, but I also think there might be a little fight in between these guys, you know, going side to side. And so I'm going to come back and revisit these with another wine in the middle. Uh, but that doesn't mean that AC's out of it or LY is out of it because they're <laughs> fantastic wines. Um, but I'm th th there's something How about these two. Mm, something about the end. Mm -hmm. The end's got, and I, I know that my vocabulary is huge and strong and all those kind of fun things. But um, the end wine that I'm having a hard time describing. Uh, but I'm going to come back through and get some of my final impressions and. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start here. I'm going to mix this up instead of coming back through this mm -hmm. way because I want to go here, here, here. I just want to kind of go back uh, through. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you recall anything that uh, stood out to you on uh, wine number two, which was L.Y.? L.Y., uh, let's see. I, I like really it. like the nose on the L.Y. I think that was an elite. Uh, that was, uh, even though the first one, I think mm -hmm. I described as pomegranate, that mm -hmm. juicy fruit, this we talked about had a much more complex, there was much more going on. There was, you said layers of cherries, not just one type of cherry. And no, I didn't get any mm. candied cherry, but there was other, there was a lot of flavor in there. Is it still, say, is it still there? It's all there. Yeah. Might even be better. Uh, then, here, I'll come back. That was nice. All right, I'm gonna go back over to here. So this one is L.Y. Oh, that nose was just as good as I remembered it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm getting some things. Which one did you just do? I just did the final. Um, the reason why I wanted to do that is that there was something going on uh, between these two wines where... Um, this is like, uh, these two wines are actually peanut butter and chocolate. And that's why I wanted to um, uh, go back through it. And oh, I'm so glad I didn't I, spit on camera. I, I talked to you guys about this yesterday. Um, as you're drinking the wine, did the wine before it complement the wine that you're having after it? And what we've got going on over here is uh, we've got two wines that are complementing each other absolutely fantastically. Um that is, uh, that is very interesting. I will take that into my considerations and my deliberations. I have a feeling we're going to have another second one in the mix. I'm pretty sure we're going to have more than what we anticipated because Brad's kind of like that. He likes to throw things at us at the very end. Hey, you guys can handle two more blends, can't you? Sure, Brad, we can. Absolutely. And we're going to. And we're going to enjoy it. And we're going to try it. Am I wrong? Mm. <laughs> oh. AC... Uh, I put mm. I put total package on that one at the beginning. It really was giving me everything that I um, that I really enjoyed. Uh, 
I, I, the reason why I was saying that this one had a, had a great package um, is because uh, I could see it from this side and I can see it from that side. No, it was, it was the mouthfeel on this one. This one had this luxurious mouthfeel that I really crave and desire. This is... All right, we're we're in a, we're in toughy. This is a tough. I, I'm we're glad in, you have to decide because I'm in I, I'm in I'm in toughy McTuffster zone. I don't know if I could make a decision on any of these. I'm gonna have to try the AC if I may, because I remember being that. Go very, right ahead. That it's, being very it's absolutely powerful. fantastic. Table three, God, well done. Wow. Holy smokes. You're stumping the master, which is not easy to do. What's, um, we had uh, some very striking different wines in the first couple of tables. Uh, this one, we have very striking wines, but um, uh, all of them really are... All these wines are really, um, you, you've brought your unique character uh, to these wines. These wines are very unique. Uh, there is not a lot of crossover on flavor profile on these wines. Nope. Um, it's almost like I gave you the directive that this person was going to use this wine, this one's going to do that one. And these wines are so unique in their character. Um, and then this, I was just trying to make sure that I... Uh, this wine wasn't affecting the flavor of that wine in any particular way, positive or negative. Um, and as I discovered, they're both fantastic wines of their own. It wasn't actually uh, either one affecting each other. A little bit of this. This is the, the DD. Amazing. You know, that AC was not as bold the second time. It's good. No. It just wasn't as bold. First time, and the the pomegranate kind of went away. No, it's definitely much more in the cherry plum, mm -hmm. uh, cherries and plum. Uh, pomegranate was uh, your perception of the acid. Um, mm. Higher acid is what pomegranate's about. You know, unless you okay. uh, yeah, that makes sense. Unless you tone pomegranate or even cranberry with a ton of sugar, you're gonna have that real. Yeah, where it, yeah, where you get the little that's that's, squirt that's, that's why you that's why you would you would think that one had that pomegranate side uh, to it. BC mm. is just crazy. Shoot. Uh-oh. Uh, BC just oh, got me. Um, I'm, I'm picking up a little cedar um, out of BC. Cedar, one of my favorite. Um, I'm going to uh, throw down and say BC oaky, right now. Oak, oaking uh, flavors that comes out. Uh, I love chewing number two pencils as a child. <laughs> <laughs> and and that that's that, what honed his super palate. That uh, graphite, hopefully mm -hmm. not lead and lead paint. Oh, you know that uh, yellow paint number two. It's good stuff. Man. <clears throat> this is hard. This is some good. I gotta, I gotta come back here one more time. Okay. I just gotta see. Uh, what's happening? The BC and the DD, two very difficult, yeah. two very difficult choices. L wine and AC. All, all of these are really, uh, we, uh, they're all, I'm judging these based on this table. Uh, this is why it's, it's so incredibly hard for me where we had on the other two tables, we had some people that had, uh, a couple of people had gravitated to heavy and a couple of gravitated to light. And so uh, then I can just decide which of the light ones was the best one and then which was the heaviest was the best one. And then between those two, which was the heaviest or which was which was the right uh, choice. Uh, this one, we've got three different mouthfeels, three different weights to it. Uh, the mouthfeel on AC, super exciting. Okay, let me. Um, this is a tough one. This is a really tough one. So it's interesting, too, because all of the colors are very similar. I'd say BC might be a little bit lighter. So all of the colors are very similar. How they, how the, the legs, although this one has some different legs than everybody else, which is interesting. Martin, are your legs farther apart or are they closer together? They're always farther apart. And hopefully my mom's not lying. Hello, Rita. <laughs> Hi, Rita. <laughs>
think. It's tough, huh? Each one has an amazing, amazing uniqueness. There's not two that I can, they're sort of similar and I have to decide between which is the one that has an X or a Y. Each one of these wines is absolutely uh, unique from its its counterpart. Yes, I cannot wait to look up the formulas for this wine, for these. Um, I won't tell anybody, I promise. Greedy, how's our time doing? What are, we, what are we looking at? Do I have a minute or two more to make a decision? I gotta start wrapping it up. Okay. All right. What are you thinking? So you've got what I'm thinking is why peanut butter I, and chocolate. Can can you explain to me why I have your glass? Wow, I didn't even see that happen. <laughs> it's pretty much like the shell game. I think Martin tricked me with the shell game. Can we rewind yeah, and see how that exactly happened? I'm going to assume <laughs> this goes this way. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I can't remember. All right. All right. As Grady told all you guys, probably comes down to aromatics. These wines are actually all of the, these two I spent more time on. But these wines are all equally fantastic. Let me just get an aromatic impression. Cream and caramel. Every time you say the word impression, I want you to do an impression of someone. I don't know what. That's just me. You don't share. <laughs> you could. <laughs> Maybe I could. This wine is definitely more Scottish. <laughs> There's plenty of Scottish great glass. <laughs> All right. Nobody's winning on aromatics. Actually, we've got four very unique aromatics in these wines mm -hmm. as well. Uh, I judged the last two that I was having a hard time with. You know, okay, this one has a little more aromatics. It, it was, it was making me excited. I'm gonna have to do one last little taster. Okay. Just get a quick impression. So of the, of I'm the, reversing the situation. Oh yeah, that's I'm, a I'm good idea. That's a good idea. So this one, and it, what's really interesting about DD is it has, the way that it sits in the glass is completely different than the way it sits in these other two glasses. BC does a little bit different, but like the difference between the legs of these two and these two are pretty interesting. I'm sure this has to do with the varietal or how clean the glasses are. I'm not really sure, but. <laughs> okay. He's going for BC now, folks. DD, BC, LY, AC. Those are the four choices right now. All fantastic. He's going for the sip. It's good. He's going for the suck. And the goofy face. Excellent. Very well. Excellent. And he does not suck unless... Not well, I'm not going to go. It's after midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let everything hang out. Mm. Okay. You got two minutes. I just pulled a negative out of that one. What? I know. How did that happen? It did. It's such so slight. Okay. And you're and you're not you're not um, balancing your palate between each one now too, which. No, it's just straight on. Just what straight up. Straight up impressions. All right. It's your ATX DP voice. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he says the word impression, I'm gonna do an impression. Oh, right. <laughs> So glad I don't know who's is who's right now. Uh-oh. Uh oh, he's got two under his hands. Here's how we're gonna go. Okay. It's uh <laughs> is it an eeny meeny miny mo kind no, of dog? No. No. <laughs> All right, here we go. trying to fill here. I'm not sure what else to say other than I'm having a great time. I hope you are too. Hey Martin, I would like one more impression. What would you like, son? Would you like a little English, a little Australian, 
Or is it all French, no? Because it's Bordeaux. It should be French, I think. It's a French love wine. Hey, the winner. <gasps> what? <laughs> okay. Now, it was uh, all of these. I have um, come here with my trusty pen. Oh, uh, right. inter er, interrupt I'm, the Brad. I, I, I just go ahead and write winner on it. I'm just saying I would make this blend and drink it. Whoever you intend, to, whoever this is, I'm just saying. It's really good. Uh, gosh dang it. All right. You, uh, uh, table three, you made you made my life very difficult. Uh, all these blends uh, and were very unique in their own right. And they all had all of their, there were so many fantastic things in all of these blends that I truly absolutely loved. And I know that I, on these last two, I was really trying to figure out what was going on between them. Uh, but I already, had, uh, the, I, what I was trying to figure out is which one of these two heavier ones was as good as as this one. Uh, oh, okay. All of them would be a fan. All of these all could, would all, be a all hit. Of these would be, Every single uh, one of these fantastic. lines would be a hit in the tasting room. Uh, um, sorry, DD. B C L Y, uh, but wait a minute! I might go ahead and bring you all back. Oh, maybe I'll put something on your notes right now that maybe this these wines could come back to uh, jump into the final throwdown. I love the changes. I love the expectation. <laughs> Grady right. really wants me to finish up. <laughs> all right. I have been hurrying things along. Now Grady just says goodbye, good night. Um, give me five minutes. We're going to shut down so that we can populate this on uh, YouTube and Mr. Facebook. And then we'll be right back with table four. Yay, good one. Thank you. That was fun.